Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. It's happening to my life. Things are not working at the worst better days. No, don't focus on how things are working out. Focus on what God is saying. If you focus on what God is saying and make what God is saying your focus, that simply means things are going to work out in the right way. It is not every result that is from God. And this is why we'll have, we don't have to be result driven, we we'll have to be God minded. We don't have to be result driven, we have to be God minded because if I'm not God minded, the tendency for me to walk away from God's purpose and God's plan for my life will always be there. And this is where a lot of people are distracted because they are trying to do something for and they keep doing it and they keep doing it, but they notice there is no result. To them, they think that if I continue in it, I'm going to see results, but the outcome was different. They were disappointed, they felt frustrated. Not knowing that the Bible talks about the 30 fold, the 60 fold, the 100 fold, those are dimensions of harvest. All harvests don't come at the same time. All harvests don't come at the same time. And this is what discouraged so many people because they, are, they have planted a seed of kindness. And they are expecting to reap that seed of kindness. And this is five years. And this is 10 years. They look at themselves and said, Oh my God, what is happening around my life? Why am I not? having the kind of result that my contemporaries are having. Why am I not seeing things being changed in my favor? I want to tell you some basic things when it comes to the laws of abundance. In your seat time, patience is required. I said in your seat time, patience is required. The most challenging season of people's life is the waiting season. The most challenging season of anybody's life is the waiting season when... Before God reveals you, God prepares you. I said before God will reveal you, God prepares you. And preparation season is not a very comfortable season. And you can decide to repeat your preparation season as many times you want. <laughs> you know why? If a person refuses to walk in obedience, they keep preparing. They will never get to a time of manifestation. Because they are not doing things according to God's instruction. If you look at the life of Joseph, he had a dream. But that dream did not happen overnight. That dream was from God, but that dream had a process. That vision was from God, but there was a process attached to it. And a lot of people don't like process. But the process actually is the pathway to the fruit you're looking for. The results you're looking for is tied in process. So sometimes people can be doing something and then they are not seeing the result they want to see. They abandon it, not knowing that they, they are already in the will of God. But because of their inability to follow through, they don't want to follow through. They just want the result. But look at what the word of God said. He said, why the earth remain it? He said, seed time, harvest, and cold, and heat, and summer, and winter, and day and night shall not cease. As long as the earth is in operation. It said sick time. So what is sick time for you right now? What is sick time for you may not be what is sick time for me. Your sick time may be right now that where God has positioned you, he expects you to stay faithful. Whether it's in persecution, whether it's in hardship, whether it's in storms, when it's in difficult moment, he expects you to stay faithful. You know, the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can live that same life. That kind of life where you can be the same yesterday. It means it's a life of integrity. It's a life of consistency. It's a life of perseverance. It's a life where you can actually be, pre who can predict you and say, this is going to be what this guy is going to do. This one is going to be what this guy is going to do. What this guy is going to do. When people forget that life operates with the law of seed time and harvest, 
They will just be floating in life. They will just be floating. They will just be wondering, why is this not happening? The question is, do you know your place of seed? There is your place of seed. There is a place where God wants you to be because he wants to walk through you there. He wants to flow through you in that place where he has positioned you, where he has kept you, where he wants you to be. And let me say this to us. When you are in the right place, it doesn't equal instant results. When you are in the right place, it takes the right timing to get into the manifestation. When you are in the right place, it does not equal instant results. That is when other people said, but I have labored in that place. But the question is, were you able to do the things that God instructed you to do in the place? Were you able to stay with it for a long period of time until it starts producing the fruit that God wants you to see? But you know sometimes because people are in a hurry to see results, and to see a better life and they become frustrated and things never worked out according to the expectation and then they said that god is not true god is not faithful why would god let me go through this there is a seed time there is a sowing season and this sowing season is what leads to the harvest season and you sow on purpose I said what? You sow on purpose. If you're going to see abundance of all things that God has promised you, your seed season is a very strategic season. In Genesis chapter 12, the word of the Lord came to Abraham and said, leave your father's house to a land I will show you. That prophetic word was a seed from God. And what is Abraham going to do with that word? He has to cultivate the word. And how do you cultivate the word? You cultivate the word by walking the word. I said what? You cultivate the word by doing what? By walking the word. That is how you cultivate the word of God. You cultivate it by walking the word. So when God gives you a word, God has given you a raw material to create the experience he wants you to have. When God gives you a word. God has given you the raw material, so the seed time. So, what is our seed time? Our seed time can be likened to a season where God has given us an instruction to do a particular thing with an intention to see us finish in that. God has given you a word. I want you to be praying every day for 30 minutes, for the next six months. I want you to be praying every day for one hour, for the next three months. It's an instruction. I want you to continue to partner with this ministry for the next five years. It's an instruction. I want you to leave for Tarkot and go to Lagos. For what? When you get to Lagos, I will tell you, it's an instruction. I want you to be careful of that relationship with that girl. And to you, you may not see anything wrong with it, but he has a reason why he said be careful. Whenever God is giving you an instruction, it's opening door for a sowing season. And that sowing season is the sowing season of that word that God has given to you. Because when we look at sowing time, sometimes we're only limited sowing to money. Money is part of it, but not the totality of it. That was why I said your attitude is a seed. Your attitude, some people can say, I don't know why I don't receive. But the question is, do you have an attitude? Right attitude towards what I can help you. Someone can walk into a place where they are going to get help, but their attitude displays them. They got into the place where God is going to help them. God have told them, I'm going to help you from here. I'm going to help you from there. I'm going to do this for you. Your ability to follow that instruction is what is going to lead to your harvest time. So the law of seed time and harvest is one of the oldest laws of life. It's one of the oldest laws. It's one of the old laws of life. It's one law that you cannot change. I cannot change. It's going to be there until Jesus returns. The law of seed time and harvest. So the question this morning is, what are you sowing in this season? Are you sowing honor? Are you sowing consistency in service? I used to preach a particular fellowship for over 15 years. You know, I just keep going to the place to serve the people. And some of them, sometimes, because of their job, they come late for the meeting. And sometimes I get to the place on time. I used to have this old friend that is now in Scotland. And uh, 
we'll just meet and we'll start talking and just started cleaning the chair the man was far older than me at least with legs than maybe 30 uh, maybe 20 years you know far older and so we clean the chair then i would join him i'm the speaker for the meeting then i would join him i'm also clean alongside and we're just chatting and we'll become very close friends now when it comes to serving it's not based on your position it's based on understanding did you hear what i said huh i said when it comes to serving it's not based on position it is based on understanding when you don't understand the purpose of service you will think that you're being taken for granted if you don't understand the purpose of service that god has called into a life of service so in this season of sowing what are you sowing are you sowing honor are you sowing consistency are you sowing dedication are you sowing hard work are you sowing patience you are just following through the process this is what i'm supposed to do and i need to do it so i was going to that fellowship and someone called me one time and asked me a question he said how much do they give you that when you go there to preach the guy also was a pastor i said they used to give me 200 naira ah that money is too small how can you be taking that kind of money he was trying to talk me into something that this is why you have to be careful of who you lend your who you lend your ear to who you pay attention to because you can be doing what is right that will take you to the top but opinions of people can extract you from getting to your destination it's just your choice you just heard what i said right now so he asked me a question how much did i give to you i said oh, 200 naira he said no that's too small ah can you be taking that kind of money and that thing that guy said to me was like a seed he has planted because i opened the door huh he has planted it so and i begin to think yes yeah, so they're not, they not supposed to give me that kind of money you know <laughs> and then i heard god say shut up <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord so i prayed for those guys for like three to four years then they increased the money to 300 naira i was living with my father when i used to go to that place so what i was enjoying in the place was not just what the money I was enjoying the service. I was enjoying the opportunity to share. I was enjoying the opportunity to minister to people. He said, your promotion don't come because you're gifted. Your promotion come because your gift was well maximized in your God-given place. Did you hear that? <laughs> I said, your promotion don't come because you're gifted. There are many gifted people that are frustrated. There are many gifted people without direction because they think that their gift will take them to the top. No, your gift alone can't take you to the top. If your gift eventually takes you to the top and you don't have the character, you're coming back to where you started. That's why I used to see people go up and then they drop. Why? Because rising is not the problem. It's the ability to sustain the, the synergy, the energy to sustain things. It's not just rising, it's sustaining it. It's not just going up. It's whether how long will you stay there? How long will you stay there? So I, I was faithful to those folks. I was just serving them. I was putting all my best. And after many long years, then I increased the money they were giving me 500 naira. Wow. That 500 naira, I have to pay transport, isn't it? <laughs> but I wasn't worried. But do you know in that same fellowship, there were people who would hear me teach and said, Pastor Faithman, I think you need to come to our church. I think I need to tell my pastor about you. I think you need to come to our business fellowship ground. So people in that place started telling people about what I do. The teaching ministry God has given to me. And the, I started reaching more people just from that small spot. Now let me say this to you. God has a strategy for your growth. But there is a process that leads to the strategy. I want to say that again. I said God has a, a strategy for your growth. And there is a process that leads to that strategy. This is where a lot of people can't go to the top because they want the harvest, but they don't want the process of the harvest. God can put you with a person and say, I want you to serve this person. I want you to stand by because your obedience will guarantee your result. What is going to guarantee your result? Your obedience. So I went ahead to serve this, those fellow. They, is it like the tenth year or the eleventh year? Then I increase what they give me to one thousand naira. I didn't even care. I didn't even bother. You know why? Service is the key to promotion. God promotes people when they stay in the place of service. 
And when the years was due for me to leave that fellowship, because just a fellowship is not a church, and I, because of the recent responsibilities that the Lord has given to me, the recent jobs we're doing, the work, ministry work we're doing, I couldn't manage the time of me going to that place and what God has called me to do in the new faith. See, your new faith starts even when you're in the old phase. Sometimes when God wants to move a person to a new phase of life, he can be doing something and then the passion for that thing begins to die off. And a passion for something new begins to rise in his spirit. And God is saying that, hey, it's time to go to this new phase. And that new phase has occupied me right now so much that there are things I don't have time for anymore. It is only God that promotes and he promotes on purpose. It's only God that promotes people and he promotes someone on purpose. There are so many of us that God is saying, if you can give me the opportunity, I will help you get there. Because in one day, what you will get cannot be compared to 30 years of gratuity. In one day, just in one day. Just in one day, what will come into your life when you follow God's process and someone say, how do you know that? I know that because I've experienced that. In one day, what God can do for you Put your last 30 years of work and hard work together, you can come into it. Why? Because God rewards six them. It's not like man's reward six them. God's reward six them. When a man stayed, that was why it paid off for Joseph. Look at Joseph becoming the prime minister of Egypt because he understood the process. There is a process to your destiny, there is a process to great relationship, there is a process to great positioning. There is a process to great exposure. There is a process to deploying your potential. There is a process to, to a great life. But a lot of people are not ready for the process. And this is why it's most people still on the ground floor after many years. Because the process will cost you something. It's going to cost you pride. Your pride has to fall. The fall of pride. Maybe I need to preach that one day. The fall of pride. Because you can't learn in the atmosphere of, proud, uh, atmosphere of pride when a person is proud, he or she cannot take from another person. So having a teachable spirit is key to your success. Having it being teachable. Because when you're teachable, God can relate with you. When you're teachable, God can connect with you. When you're teachable, God can correct you. But when a person is not teachable, it becomes difficult for them to grow in the things that God expects them to grow from. Because they are not teachable. You have to be teachable to get to your destination. Most of the progress that is going to happen in your life is when you respond to correction and instruction. I said most of the progress that will happen to your life is when you respond to correction and instruction. That is how you're going to see that progress. That's how you're going to see that key. There are a lot of people that God may put them in a place with someone and maybe that period of the, they met the person, the person was like tilling the ground was stealing the ground and they asked the person please can you give me a biscuit the person said i have no biscuit oh my god i thought i could have had this biscuit because i was working with you the person was still stealing the ground and they asked the person please can you give me a bottle of 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 soft drink the person said i don't have a bottle of soft drink anytime i ask you something you don't have so what am i wasting my time here now let me say this to you when you are on assignment avoid extraction especially your personal need because your personal need is one of the things that keep you away from doing the will of God. Your personal need. So the person was still stealing that vision. And then he said, I'm angry, I'm going. Since you can't give me biscuits, since you can't give me a soft drink, now I'm going. And the person left. As he left, God started prospering. <laughs> where he left or where she left, stop prospering the place. Her harvest was there. His harvest was there. But right now, he can connect back to the harvest. Can I say this to you? If you're not patient, you're going to miss out a lot on life. I'm telling you, you're going to miss out on a lot of things. There are so many things you will miss out on because if you go with sight, you will lose it. I'm telling you, if you go by what you see, you're going to lose it. But if you walk by faith, you'll be able to follow through the process. If you go by sight, oh, I'm looking at this and oh, it's not even flourishing. Oh, how many people are even here? Hey, what is happening here? Hey, who is going to help me here? They are looking with their eyes. They are using their eyes to look. Not knowing that the place of obedience is the place of provision. 
The place of obedience is the place of provision. I prefer to die in the will of God than to prosper outside his will. I prefer. It's better for me to stay in God's will. You know why? The will of God is rewarding. The will of God is peaceful. The will of God is strength. The will of God comes with uncommon energy. When you find out what God's will is, and then he said, I'm going to follow it up. All the helpers, all the people that will help you. Let me, say, look, let me tell you how God has arranged your life. It has positioned people all over your future, but you can't see them. The only way you can see them is when you start following the process. He has positioned people. The person that is going to help you get your first house, he has positioned you. The person that is going to help you get your first job or a better job has been positioned. But the question right now is, how can you assess them? How will you be able to assess them? For the marriage relationship, there is somebody positioned. For everybody, there is somebody that God has positioned. But you can't, you can't, you can't come into it by might. You can't come into it in the flesh. You can't come into it by strength. You will come into it by obedience and listening to the Holy Ghost. If you are not led by the Spirit, you will become a victim of life and circumstances. If you are not led by the Spirit, there are many things I could have missed with my life in my life today if I was looking with my eyes. Hey, this place does not look like the place Anything is going to happen. I shared a testimony with you some few days back where a preacher was sent to preach. Remember the story? I don't know how many of you remembered. And somebody came and brought the money for the aircraft for him there. How many people remember the story? Remember the story I shared? He went to a place to preach. The place doesn't look like any place that something good will come out from. But he's seen in obedience, God supplies. In obedience, God supplies. Everything you're looking for is in the place of obedience. Once you make your connection right, your future is in position. Once you get your connection right, your whole life is reposition. Unknowing to most people, their delay was caused by them, not by God. There are delay bets out of ignorance. There are delay bets out of deception. And there are delay bets out of rebellion. I can't follow God. Imagine me telling God, God, I can't follow you. God, I can't follow you. Why won't you follow me, faith man? Because my mother needs some help. I need to go, go, go get a job. Help my mother out. Okay, go get your job. <laughs> why, why are you not going to follow me, faith man? Because I need to get my degree before I follow you. Okay, go get your degree. How many of you think that God will just be waiting on you? When God is telling you something, he's telling five persons that same thing. Have you ever seen somebody before? Have you ever had an experience where you said... I wanted to do this before, and then you see somebody else doing it. I just want somebody that is sincere. Okay, that's good. I have witness. You said you want to do it. You have a plan to do it. Then somebody else starts doing it. Whenever God is talking to you, he's talking to more than 10 persons about that same matter. Oh, you think just God will just trust you with his will for everything? Ah, you can you do that? <laughs> Just walk that way. When God is talking to you, there are 10 people, maybe in Australia, in Egypt, in Asia, in Canada, in America, in Aba, in Enugu, in Onitsha, in Lagos, in Brazil, in Netherlands, in China. He's saying the same thing to them. But adventure, anyone fail, these other guys were wrong with it. God does not conclude his plan on one man because no man can be trusted at that level Hallelujah. so what he does is that he reveal a part of the plan to you and then watch what you're going to do then go to another person and reveal part of that plan to the person understanding the will of God brings peace Rest 
and security. I said, understanding the will of God guarantees peace, rest, and divine security. Understanding the will of God. And let me say this to you. It is not late to connect with God's will for your life. It's not late. It's not late to align yourself to your place of destiny. It's not late. It's not late to align yourself to where God wants you to be. Because once you get it right, the rest of things will fall in place. The rest of things will fall in place. God was bringing us to this destination. After we lost the property at Makuba and everything we lost, we lost money, we lost the building, we lost everything. And then one day I went to take, get water. I saw a place, a park. You guys, most of you know that park. And he said, go use that park for church. He didn't tell me that we're going to come here. He didn't tell me that. He said, go use that park for church. I was... The excitement I had in my spirit when he said that. I said, wow. I just left my water. The bucket, because I was single, I was living in town there. I left the water, I went inside the place. I said, hey, what will it take for me to rent this place? They said, well, we can't tell you. You just have to go to our head office. So I got to the place, and they told me, I was so excited to rent the place. But don't remember that we just have some losses. We lost money, we lost building, we lost so many things. So where was, where am I going to raise the money? Well, listen to this. In the will of God, you have provision. I said, in the will of God, you have provision. One more time. In the will of God, you have provision. And because there is provision in God's will, there is peace in his will. And then from nowhere, the money starts coming. Then we rent the place. We are using the place. We are excited. We are glad. Then two kids start coming to church. Two children. Two brothers, just sit and come to church. He said, when God wants to start something, he doesn't give you the whole details. God does not give the whole detail of everything about your life in one encounter. What he's going to do is to reveal the parts. He will reveal things in parts and expect you to start sowing that word. That word he has given to you. He said, I want you to sit down here. Oh God, this place is hot. How can I sit down here? Oh God, this place doesn't look cold. How can I sit down here? Oh God, this place doesn't look attractive. How can I sit down here? God said, sit down here. Oh God, my friends are not here. None of my friends is here. How many people have missed their destiny because they are considering their friend's position? How many people have lost out on the will of God? Oh, if my friend is not here, I'm not going to be there. Let me say this to you. When it comes to your destiny, it's personal. When it comes to your life, it's personal. If you always consider your friends before you listen to God, you're going to have a life that will be full of pain, offense, and destruction. You know why? The will of God for your life does not include your friend. Especially when God is dealing with you as a person. And we had that obedience. That obedience brought us into this property that we have today. That obedience. Being able to follow God. You see, all you need to make it work is the voice of God and following that voice. All you need to make it work. Whether it has to do with your relationship, it has to do with your job, it has to do with your calling. All you have to do is to obey the voice of God. And sometimes obeying his voice may look like you're alone. Everybody's gone. You're walking by yourself. It looked dry. Let me show you. When everybody's gone, you're by yourself. That's the best time to move forward. When all the friends are gone. You know why I said that? Because at this point, no distraction. At this point, nobody will bring opinion to you. At this point, you're saying, God, it is me and you. God, I am facing you. God, I want to follow you. God, I want to do your will. Sometimes I've, I've seen some people, the hand of God was upon them. God's hand was upon them and I can see that God was going to use this guy mightily or God was going to use this lady mightily. But you know what happened to them? They were not able to understand what was happening to them. They couldn't understand the dealings of God in their life. And you know what happened? They start making decisions based on their gift. Oh, I'm gifted. I need to go to a place where people can spot me out. See, let me say this to you. Only God can showcase you. 
I've just told you. Only God can showcase you. If you think that if you get to where the crowd is, you're going to show up, let me say this to you. It's not of him that will it. Of him that run it. He said it is God who do what? Who showed mercy. So it's not in how, oh, I need to be here. Yeah, if I go to this place now, there is so much opportunity there. If I go to that place, opportunity is not based on sight. Opportunity is helped and created by the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that brings opportunity. Why am I saying this? I've seen it in my life and ministry. We are strangers. When the scripture says strangers will build your wall, I've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over. Let me say this to you. In the place of obedience, there is the God kind of attraction. So we reap what we sow. If we sow dishonesty, what are we going to reap? The same dishonesty. They will become dishonest to us. So God is calling in this season and he's saying, what are you planting, my son? What are you planting, my daughter? Are there seeds you have planted that you need to uproot? Okay, let's uproot them this morning. How do I uproot the wrong seed? But my words were repentance. Lord, I'm sorry for that thing I did. I'm not supposed to do that. And Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. And I, I take authority over every wrong seed, behavior, I have sown in the past that may stand against my vision or my dream in the name of Jesus. You exercise authority. Then you make your way to creating a new path by the Spirit of God. One of the greatest gifts God will give to you is to give you his word. One of the greatest gifts that God can put in your life is to give you the word. When God gives you the word, he has given you resources for building your life. When God gives you the word, he has given you a resources that a lot of people don't know. Someone say, I need money. Oh, I need money. Most times it's not money that people need. What they need is revelation. Like what we we're taught in the first service. That I'm a, I'm a kingdom bank. I'm a kingdom bank. And God can say, pay this person and I can pay. I'm a kingdom bank. God can place a demand on me. Because I'm a kingdom bank. The Bible said we have this treasure where? In the eighteen vessel. You are the eighteen vessel. There are treasures in you. And you need to begin to see yourself the way God saw you. You need to see yourself the way God has seen you. You need to begin to understand that you are special in God's program. You are special in God's agenda. You cannot use your life for a wrong experiment. You cannot use your life to waste it in the wrong places. You've got to know that there are seasons of, attached to your life. And these seasons has a spare date. There is time for everything. I said what? There is time for everything. There is a season you come into and God tell you, you see this season I want you to do intensive reading. I want you to read all you're supposed to read, all you can study. I want you to read like never before. Buy this book. Buy this material. Buy this. And you're, I had that kind of season one time in my life. Buy this book. Buy this thing. Listen to this person. Listen to that person. I was just walking on myself. There was no car. I've got no car. So uh, I go to a place to preach and they'll say, Oh, dear man of God, thank you for coming. We just want to give you this love offering. Maybe I open inside of it. It's just 5,000 naira. Or it's just 2,000 naira. Then 60% of that money, I'm going to stop by a bookshop, buy some books, and get some materials for myself. Then I put it on my bag and then I carry it home. I'm coming to show it to my wife that I bought books. <laughs> we have bought books. Sometimes our meal is being, uh, is being reduced. Some things are being reduced at home because I needed to read, I needed to get the materials. I can't forget this man one day. The man is late right now. He looked at me, he used to be a manager of that bookshop. And he said, now is the time you're working the miracles. Now is the time. I didn't understand. But after many years I did. Now is the time. Let me say this to you. The season that God has put you into right now is a very strategic season that will lead to the next season. The season you're in right now. A lot of people take seasons for granted and not knowing that, that, that this season will lead to the next season. Imagine me not working on myself. All of these foreigners are listening to our ministry all over the world today. How could that have happened? All of those days of working, polishing your conversation, working on your communication, ensuring that you're able to say things right, say it properly, to be able to help people and minister them. I will, not, will have been able, like my friend said to me, he said, your, your emotive accent, sorry. 
could have killed your ministry. <laughs> we are making fun. He's just making fun. So he said, imagine that all of those years you're working on yourself, you didn't work on yourself, how would you have been able to do communication and presentation that could have been able to reach different class of people today? He said, that could have affected the work. You know, there are seasons that God gives to you because there is a big season ahead of you. But sometimes if you don't see that season, you'll be carried away with your present need. All the things you're going through. Look at, I don't have good clothes. So instead of buying books to read and develop my, yourself, he's not going to buy clothes. It's good to buy clothes, but what about mental empowerment? How is the money going to come in the future? How are you going to attract resources? How are you going to increase your possibilities? If you're not properly developed, who is going to invest into you? If you have an opportunity to do a business seminar for someone who is your friend and he's willing to pay, how much will he pay? I was watching this guy some few days back. The guy is a coach. And then some people were writing to him and said, we would like you to coach us, we would like you to train us. You know, and I did a video on Facebook and sent it and said, the last time I coached someone is one hour, he collects $16,000 for one hour. $16,000 is, uh, give and take, is over close to uh, $6.2 million. $6.2 million to 6.7 million depending on the exchange rate. He said that is what it takes, it takes for one hour. And he's so booked, he's so busy that he doesn't have time for much people. Imagine someone in one hour. But do you know there is another person who take $200,000 in one hour? Yes. That's another person. This was far back like 10 years ago I heard about a person it takes, I've also heard about someone who did a speech for one hour, it went for one million dollars. So imagine, we're all human beings. What happened? Some people, by understanding season, they were able to process things. Don't be in a hurry to showcase yourself. Be in a hurry to train yourself. Don't be in a hurry to showcase yourself. That's no time. But, but be in a hurry to train, to develop, to equip yourself, to get yourself ready for where God is taking you to because your abundance is connected to the application of truth. Your abundance. God will give you a season. It may not look like a season where everybody has known your name. It may look like you're in one obscure area and nobody's even hearing your voice. Ha <laughs> ha. And then he's saying, when are they going to hear my voice? No, don't bother about them hearing your voice now. Just bother about working on yourself. Bother about developing yourself. Because in 30 minutes, your video can go, it can go viral like that. It can just everywhere in 30 minutes. Something can happen and people will be screaming, so where did she come from? What happened to her? Who helped her? So don't bother about the manifestation. Always think about how do I improve myself? How do I maximize the season that God has given to me? And let me say this to you. Every season contains increase if that season is well maximized. Every season. There's a season in your life that may look like you don't have a, a lot of jobs that you're doing right now. But that season is giving you an opportunity to improve yourself for what is ahead of you. Anytime you discover that you're free, you have more free time. You have more free time. You're not doing anything. No, it's a season that God is giving to you because another season is going to come that you're going to be very, very what? Busy. So this season that I have a free time, what am I going to do? I'm going to study. I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to work on myself. Every season that is properly maximized will lead to greater seasons. Every season that God has given to you and you maximize that season. Look at David. When he was in that season, when he was taking care of those few sheep. The sheep were few, but God was training David. David was growing. The lion came and had victory. The bear came and had victory. What was happening? God was training the guy. He was getting ready. When the training was going on, God did not say, David, David, my son, one day you will see Goliath. Mm -mm. <laughs> As long as, why is he not saying something about it? He was with us, he killed the lion, he killed the bear. And the daddy dad looked at him and said, I'd like you to go take this food and give to your brothers to eat. 
And then he got to the place and look at this giant that was talking. Ha! Something in David rise. He said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? But Saul could not say that. The elder brother of David could not be bold to look at Goliath. They would not break him. Saul couldn't say that. But David came and said, Who is this guy? Why was he bold to say that training? That training season, he never took it for granted. When the ship was few, he never took it for granted. He was showing up. He was showing up. It's likened to a pastor. The ship is few. I'm getting tired of this church. I'm getting tired of this ministry. There is no money saved. Have you seen what talk before? Eh? <laughs> there is no money saved. Everywhere looks dry. You know what is happening to that pastor or that ministry leader? They are looking at the people. He's looking at the people for a provision instead of looking at God for a provision. You don't look at people for provision. You look at God for provision. Because if God is your source, your need will be taken care of. If God is your source, he will send a revenue to bring your bread. He will send a revenue to bring money. I'm not talking someone right now. If God is your source, money will never be a problem because there are many ways that the money is going to come to you. There are many ways God is going to put the right people in your life to cause finances to happen around you. And if people don't show up, beds will show up. That's for the accent I believe God. If people don't show up, a particular man was believing God for money and he will finish praying. Life was so difficult for him. He said, God, I know you can send the money. You can even use bed to send the money. He finished praying, went back in his room and relaxed and lied down. A few hours later, he came out and he saw that money has dropped in his compound. The beds. God could do anything. God could show up. God could come in many ways. So when David was, was, was taking that training season, very important because you can't come into abundance except you understand training. I said you can't come into abundance except you do what? You understand training. You can't come into abundance because it takes skill to manage abundance. It takes understanding to sustain abundance. It takes knowledge to keep maximizing the abundance that God has entrusted to your care. So what happened to David was that he was faithful to those few sheep. There were a few, but his faithfulness did not change. There are people, when they see two or three persons, the anointing dries up. That's not really anointing. When they see, oh, fact, oh I, I thought I could have seen crowd here today. Oh, I thought that, I, you know why I don't get disturbed by those things? Because I've actually preached to benches before. Empty chairs. Have you done that before? So, when you see two people, you're, you're happy. Because you're used to preaching to benches. I've, been, I've told this story before. I was invited to a church to preach, and then I got to the church Sunday morning like this, and the pastor was not there. No member was there. Just cheers and pulpits. The platform. What do you expect from me? I should go home. We should have service. By myself. I preach. I shout, shout. Preach the word. Teach the word. Finish teaching. Sleep by myself. Then I gave offering. I took it back. I shared grace. I closed the service. Caught the nearby bus. Came back home. I've come to preach. A few days later, I saw the pastor. I said, I was in your church to preach. I preached. The service heard. He said, don't minute. So I was there. Then he gave me a reason why he didn't come to church. Sunday Monday. So you know that kind of thing. So I've seen that kind of thing. So, so that's why I don't get moved by some things. There are things that don't move me. When I was told that people are watching me from 111 countries, I thank God. I knew it was the word of God coming to pass because I've preached your empty chairs before. Do you know you can be rich from wherever you are? Do you know you can be successful and be so blessed that folks will look at you and say, how does this guy get his life? There is something God used to do. Wherever God finds faithfulness, he multiplies provision. You just heard me. Wherever God finds faithfulness, he multiplies provision. And God has given us cutting edge technology to do things. Cutting edge technology to do things. 
to do things? Because we choose to stay in the path of faithfulness. See, let your faithfulness not be determined by who showed up or who did not show up. Your faithfulness should be decided by what God has called you to do and stay focused with it. No matter whether they come or they don't come, you stay there. Stay in your duty post. I said what? Stay in your duty post. Stay there. Be faithful there. Be committed there. Stop running to people's houses and places. Where things are happening, say, hey, I like this place. I wish our house was like this. You know, the people will be telling them, tell them right now. This family you're born into, we want to give you an opportunity to change family name. Or change. Ha. You have not finished asking them, is that I want to change. I want to choose my father. <laughs> I want to choose my mother. <laughs> because where they are coming from, there's enough hell for them. So they don't want that. But none of us could decide that. That is why you're born into that family. To dig it out with them. That's why you're born there. You say, my God, I was born on the wrong side of the bed. No, it's a good side of the bed. Make it good. Hallelujah. Be faithful. Show up. Being faithful. Being committed. Being consistent. Let me say this to you. If you're jumping around, you keep jumping until you get to 70 years old. You may wonder, my God, I'm 70. Ooh. Because you're jumping around. But if you choose to behave like David, to so stay with those few sheep until God graduates you. Do you know that David did not return back to those few sheep? Wow. Wow. Somebody hearing this right now. He did not return back there. From there, he went on. After he killed Goliath, the death of Goliath was David's promotion. God was watching the guy. He was watching him. He watched how he defended the few sheep. There were a few. He could have said, hey, liar, have your breakfast very well. There are even few. He could have said, bear, have your, bre- have your dinner. What concerned me? Let me run for my life. For some of us. Some of us, what will you do? You see a lion and you have few sheep. You will jump the fence and break it and refill it back. Some people will leave. Ah, oh, my oh, you want me to die for this few sheep? Oh, so me, I will just leave. Ah, no, I don't I, I didn't love sheep like that. You can always buy sheep in Jerusalem markets. But not David. I was sent here. I will defend here. I will defend the sheep under my care. So what happened? The lion showed up. He said, okay, we can do it, lion. What did it? Lion, you want it? We can do it. The lion was watching, was watching the lion. The lion roared. You think the lion was quiet? Oh, you think the lion was just living? David just came. Oh, is that what you used to think? Oh, you know how when I joke, what really happened? The lion also said that we are ready for battle. He, has, he was watching. He was watching. He was watching. Because he knows that not just only the life of the sheep is at stake, his own life is also what? At stake. And I need to defend this sheep. My dad asked me to watch over them. Heaven was watching Selema. Heaven was watching the movie. Let's see what this guy is going to do. God was watching. Angels were watching. 24 elders were watching. They were watching David. And then, you know what he did? As that lion showed up, he went up to it and pulled the lion. Killed the lion. He sees you are smiling. They came around the lion and said, ah, Thank God for this kind of master we have. Thank God for this kind of master we have. Thank God we, don't, we didn't have an hireling to be our shepherd. He could have abandoned us, he could have run and left us. Then they thought, that the battle is over. The bear came. He said, you guys, don't worry. All of you relax. You relax. All of you relax. I know what to do. The same thing. He showed up. He killed the bear. Imagine his sheep. How they will feel. What a pastor. What a leader. What a mighty man. He was faithful in his place of duty. You know what happened? When he remembered his experience in that place. He said, who is this uncircumcised spirit? The, the way he spoke to, to them, they knew that this guy had seen something that didn't show them in, milita- in Israel Military Academy. What they did not teach in Israel Military Academy, this guy 
have experience in God's academy. Which Israel army is supposed to lie and they throw lion at you as a fight? They don't do that. That's not what they do. But look at the training. See, don't run from your training because it is special to your assignment. When God is training you, don't be, don't be trying to look for easy way out of what is happening right now. Don't run from your training because it is special to your assignment. I know what happened. As he killed that lion and that bear, and he looked at Goliath, he said it's like one of those beasts. You see, comparison, he compared it. And said that's what is going to happen to this guy today. And so when it was coming, Goliath was talking. And how many of you think Goliath was talking and David was quiet? He said, oh my God, oh my God, look at Goliath. They've been talking about this man, so this is how you look, eh? This is his height, oh my God. Look at this man, he's a giant. He never behaved that way. That's how some of us used to behave. Oh, this man is a powerful man. Oh. This man is a great man. I can't handle. Oh. You know, fear begins to come. No, David. David looked at him and tells so I can do this job. So I say, this man has been fighting from his youth. And then he gave Saul his resume. He said, one day I was taking care of the sheep. And here come this lion. Ha! 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 ha. You, kill, you saw you kill a lion? I say, yes, sir. Here come this bear. You kill this? Yes, sir. And this Goliath is like one of them. It's going to be a supernatural strategy that God will give us and we'll have the victory. And then, so it's okay. I want you to go, but we need to dress you proper as you can represent the Israel army. Dress proper. Put your helmet. Put everything. And they started dressing him up. After they were done with the dressing, he moved. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I can't work with this. This is not my wiring. This was not what I did when I killed the lion and the bear. There was no military attack. No, no. I can't go with this. He started pulling it off and carried a shepherd bag. A slinge. Hey! Hey! If it's your son doing that, what would you say? See you. Look at you. Uh, never come and see trouble. Oh. Never come, oh. Are you seeing what this boy wants to do? He wants to just kill himself like that. With this link and not this stone, you're going to Goliath. Where is your AK for the eight? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And the guy picked five smooth stones. Wow. Everybody in the natural was saying, ah, David, may your soul rest in peace. May Jesse receive you in peace. Not in pieces. But you see, when you're working with God and you understand seasons, nothing can be impossible to you. And you know what happened? He got to that brook, he picked that stone. And Goliath was talking. And David was not quiet. He was talking back. He said, this is what to do to your problem. This is what to do to your financial situation. When, when need is talking, talk back at the need. Don't go and sit down and begin to cry and cry. Those things won't pay your bills. I've just told you. You cry and cry and cry. You say, hey, God, if I wish, could I be this one? Be doing it. After I do it, pay your neighbor bill. Pay your rent. Hallelujah. That's not what to do. That's not what to do. Hallelujah. The Bible said the joy of the Lord. Come on, one more. The dead that do know their God. A man Zion that be what? Nay, in all these things. Greater is he. In him. We move. How about they are? What is this? Hallelujah. And then he picked that smooth stone. You know, Goliath was not watching at him. <laughs> so what does he want to do? Stone. Told me. <laughs> Be careful of small things. They have potential to sink great things. There is so much to that. Be very careful. And Goliath was looking at him, thinking that 
The boy has missed his way. Hey, so even if you can't talk, why not bring somebody that is so tall and heavy and uh, very big and maybe to stand me? And you know what happened? As David released that stone from that sling, it was not just a stone, it was God going. Eh? God in the form of stone. I have a scripture. The stone which the builder have rejected. The stone which the army of Israel never used. God is using David with a stone. The resources that will keep Goliath was always there. Did a stone fly down from heaven and come there? The stone was there. But when David came, he saw resources. He saw resources. This is what he's going to turn to bring this guy down. He saw resources. You know what happened? As he released the stone, everybody was watching. Even Goliath was watching. Do you know they were, they were, Goliath had backup? Backup. You know what our backup is for? Once he gives instruction, we'll go. And the back, backup was not drafts. <laughs> Check this story. Hallelujah. I know what happened. As they saw Goliath doing like this, the reason what I did was going back. The stone had made its way. They were watching him and they saw him drop. They didn't run down to him and say, let's protect our leader. No, read your Bible. Oh, you haven't considered that. As Goliath dropped, they turned their back. What will drop Goliath will take you out. Because they have so much confidence in him. So, everybody took out. And here come the David. David was running towards him. Then you hear the army of Israel saying, Hey, we know what to do. You know something like that. You have labored and have done everything. And they come from behind the back. <laughs> now you don't have this kind of people around in Jesus' name. <laughs> you need to have some real and genuine people that are going to stand with you in good time and bad time. And they are there for you. And David went and you know, pulled that sword out and take off the head of Goliath. God was watching him. Imagine that David ran from the lion. Imagine that David ran from the bear. If will you be able to have the confidence to stand here? There are certain things going on in your life right now. God is building your confidence. There are certain things happening around you right now. God is training you. So you may look like it's a difficult training. But if you respond to this training, your future will be secure. So you may look like, why am I like this? Why am I lonely right now? Why am I standing? See, sometimes when things are that way, you don't have to be offended. You need to ask this question. Lord, what do you want me to understand in this season? Lord, what do you want me to do with this season? Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to understand in this season? Hallelujah. When God one time told me something, he said, I'm going to take this ministry all over the world. Pastor C was always telling me, he said, they will hear you from afar. That was a prophetic word. He said, they will hear you from afar, and what they hear will be their testimony, will change their life, that they will hear from afar. I just said, hand them to that, Pastor. I just believe what my pastor said. So no matter what the pressure was, I believe that that word was going to come to pass, because prophetic words are resources for building your dreams. Prophetic words are the raw material for creating the desired future. Prophetic words are the words, the raw material for creating the future. So it doesn't matter where you are right now, you can just say, God, I trust you. I changed my path. I'm going to sit on the right place. I'm going to hook up with the right people. Do you know that as one of the ways increase come, increase come by association. Association. Like somebody you start associating with, what is happening in their life start rubbing off on you. It's called a rub-off. It's called what? A rub-off. Because you're associating with them, that same thing that is happening around them begins to happen around you because you, by association. There are things you get by association. There are things you receive by association. And there is someone here today, God is saying, it's time to judge your association. It's time to reposition 
and consider the association you're into. If this association have a synergy to move your destiny forward, if this association have the anointing to move you to where you want to go to. Now let me say this to us. One of the ways we sow seed is to look out for what we, what we want. If we sit in a person, we'll place that seed on that person. That's one of the ways you sow seed. You look at this person. You want this in life. You want that in life. You want this in life. And this person have all of those things you're looking for. It's a good brand. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying right now? It's a good brand. This person have those things you're looking for. Those things you you treasure. Those things you want to see. Those things you want to manifest. He said, Ah, I just came to sow seed. I just came to plant this seed. I just came to to place this seed in your life. He said, For what? Just I just came to sow seed. Because you've already prayed and said, God, I thank you because I'm going to reap this harvest. This harvest of good relationship. This harvest of good marriage. This harvest of children. This harvest of house. This harvest of class. This harvest of ministry that is reaching more people around the world. I want to see this kind of thing in my own life. Hallelujah. I round up on these notes. The law of association is a strategic law in determining your rising or fall or your fall. The law of association is a strategic law that determines your rising or your fall. So, whoever you are in association with, what they have, you will contact with it. You will make contact with that. What you'll be making contact with, you'll be making contact with something you associate yourself with. The people you associate yourself with are the kind of experience you'll be having. People don't know this. That was why the Bible said in Amos 3 verse 3, Amos 3, verse 3 it said, can two walk together except they be agreed? In Amos 3 verse 7, it said, the Lord God will do nothing except he release his servant the prophet. Jesus said, whatever two of these shall agree, shall be done unto you. There is power in association, the law of association. Who is in your life? Who, who are your allies? Who are who, 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 is, who is the person who you take counsel from? Who is the person you connect with? Who is the person you, you, you look up to for inspiration and for leadership? Who do you connect with? What kind of people do you connect with? Do you connect with people who have a flow or you connect with a dead sea? Because there are, there are places that are dead sea. Sorry to say this. They are dead sea. You, you, you can't grow. You can't get better. How do you know a place that God has brought you to? Number one, you start improving spiritually. Number two, you start getting better mentally. Number three, you start getting better emotionally. Number four, your finances start moving forward. And it takes process for all of this things I've shared with you to begin to happen. The law of association. There is power in the right association. There are people to connect with. There are people I relate to. I don't relate to them because of uh, how they look. I relate to them because of what they have in God. They are networking God. They are connection in God. I thought the what we did this this uh, this February went to a place or somebody and we we like the person. It's not a pastor, but we felt that we needed to sow a seed because I needed to attract what, this kind of quality of person around me. And the person was surprised when we sent him an offering and said, uh, "One of we are sending this to you." Because in the natural, people look at that person as somebody they can take from. Anybody who sees him wants, wants, can you help me, sir? Please, I'm doing this, sir. Can you help? They always see him as somebody they can take from. That is his position. He's blessed. But we didn't see him as somebody we can just take from. We saw him as somebody we can sow into as we can attract the, those crop of persons to come into our network. And see, you can decide a future by association. And the seed that connects with that association. And I'm here to say to you, no situation right now you're going through that looks ugly that is a permanent situation. You can upset the situation. <laughs> uh, I said what? You can upset. <laughs> Have somebody upset you before? <laughs> so you can upset that situation. You can dethrone that situation and you can say, well, from this day forward, this situation will no longer have me. Then you get into the word of God and then you start believing God's word. A lot of people go to church, but it's only a few persons that have God's word in their spirit. 
And if the word of God is not in your spirit, every wind that comes your way will, way will change your direction. You just be wondering why, why is this wind blowing me? Why is this wind affecting my dream? Why is this wind happening this way? Why is that happening that way? Why? Well, because association. Why? Well, because no revelation. Association, revelation, inspiration, instruction. These are strategic keys if you're going to come into abundance. I'd like us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'd like you to just talk to God and say, Lord, help me to connect with the seasons you've called me into. Help me to stay with the season you've put me into. Help me to stay where you have connected me to. Help me to abide where you will cause me to grow. Let my sight not determine my thinking. Let your word decide my way of doing things. Let my thinking emanate from the knowledge of your will. Let my expectation be based on your word. Let my strength come from your will. Lord, thank you. Help me. Help me to get it right. Help me to get this thing right. I'm tired of leading myself. Lord, I want to trust your leadership. Lord, I want to trust your instruction. Lord, I want to trust your understanding. Holy Spirit, lead me. Holy Spirit, I depend on you. Holy Ghost, help me. Help me to understand. Help me to flow. Help me to be able to see the things you want me to see. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lamb of God. I have understanding. I have understanding. I know what to do. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you right now that understanding will come to you. May God give you a new picture. May God give you insight. Insight into what to do right now. That you grow in the place where God has planted you. That you begin to do things amazing far beyond your natural understanding. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. If you are watching this broadcast right now or you are in this service and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, i like you to say this after me. One of the greatest things that can happen to us is to come to Jesus. So if you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer, that means you're born again. And the Spirit of God is going to lead you from this day forward. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel is Faithman Teachings on YouTube. Faithman Teachings on YouTube. You have opportunity to watch more than uh, 1,700 videos on YouTube. So subscribe to the channel as we're able to enjoy the playlist on leadership, on business, on ministry, on different aspects of life, relationship. We have a lot of things going on on that YouTube channel. And also you can watch me 24-7 on finishworktv.com. Finishwork TV is streamed 24-7, bringing God's word to people all over the world. Wherever you are, you can watch this broadcast and be able to receive the engrafted word of God. So go to finishworktv.com and stay there. Your life will not remain the same. You can get our book on Amazon. For the things you need to know about your future, it's available on amazon.com. For the things you need to know about your future. Well, if you want to partner with this ministry or you want to give an offering, you want to sow a seed, you can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving. You can use your debit card or your credit card. You can also use your master and visa card to do your giving. I believe that this broadcast has inspired you. Until our next broadcast, don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon. Let's give him praise. Let's give him thanks. I'd like us to praise him.